king. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. Today brings us to the midweek point in the season of Easter. And midweek point is always a wonderful Sunday. Good Shepherd Sunday. It's a reminder that you and I have a faithful shepherd. And he's not there just to mentor us, but he's there to shepherd us, to guide us and to lead us, you know, in the way that we should go. Uh, he's the good shepherd who laid down his life so that we can live. And as a result of his death and his resurrection, our lives are safe and secure. Today also brings us to the examination of our 2014 confirmants. And as I was telling the young ladies here today, I'm feeling pretty old because of all of these young ladies I baptized. So, <laughs> they're smiling at me. So. Okay, well, to get our service underway this morning, uh, our service today is on the screen, and we begin with our opening song, Lord, You Have My Heart. <clears throat>
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God and God in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Lord Jesus, our good shepherd, we confess to you that we have been ungrateful for all that you have given to us to sustain our bodies and lives. Forgive us, good shepherd. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Like sheep, we are distracted and tend to wander and scatter. We forget who we are as baptized children of God and fail to respond to your shepherding in our lives. Forgive us, good shepherd. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We confess that in difficult times of life, we sometimes struggle to be confident in your presence and protection, seeking to find our own comfort. Forgive us, good shepherd. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As we journey through this sinful world, we overlook the goodness and mercy that flows into our lives from you. Forgive us, the shepherd. The Lord Jesus Christ, our good and faithful shepherd, hears our cries and says to us, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Receive the forgiveness that has been won for you. Christ laid down his life and rose from death into victory. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death, the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our good shepherd, we may know him, who calls us each by name and follows where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading for Good Shepherd Sunday from the book of Acts chapter 4 reminds us that as members of his flock, the Lord Jesus Christ enables us to be courageous and faithful confessors of this risen Lord and Savior. And we see that happening in Acts chapter 4 as the apostles answer for the miracle that they performed at the temple as they stood before the Sanhedrin. As they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who heard, who had heard the word, believed, and the number of the men came to about 5,000. On the next day, the rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were aware of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in the midst, they, had, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed 
done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our service continues with a psalm hymn based on Psalm 23, hymn number 709.
that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth, and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God, and whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his, of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit whom he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Hallelujah. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Hallelujah. We rise to the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. We listen to our good shepherd. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This is the charge I have received from my Father. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our service continues with the hymn of the day, hymn number 711, Savior like a shepherd leads. Please be seated.
Today is a wonderful day for questions and answers. Right. So just take a deep breath. It's going to be all okay. So today, Good Shepherd Sunday. You know, Pastor loves that window back on the balcony. A lot of people here at church don't see that Pastor loves talking about it because it's wonder, a wonderful reminder of really what's happening for you. As I said at the beginning of service, all of you were baptized here. That's a remarkable thing. And what a privilege it was for me, 12, 13 years ago, for me to be a part of this special day when God made you a member of his flock. God gave you the Holy Spirit. And this good and faithful shepherd has been busy carrying you, just as your parents have been watching over you and guiding you. And as pastor always likes to say, when it comes to that good shepherd window in the balcony, there comes a day when the Lord Jesus, well, in a sense, takes us out of his arms and puts us down, and now, I mean, put us down in a good way, puts us on the ground so that we can walk and follow him. And that's what today is all about. We heard about the courageous confession that the apostles made before the Sanhedrin, pointing out that Jesus is the risen Lord and Savior and how he's Lord of all, and how God gives us his love so that we can share that love with those that are around us. And finally, this good shepherd is the one that will lead and guide you your whole life long. So today, what, what is really happening is 13 years ago, people answered about the Christian faith in your name when you were baptized. Today, you're giving voice to that confession. So in a sense, you're joining the apostles. You're making a confession of that name. That, it isn't just a one-time occurrence, but it's something that happens throughout our lives. God calls on us to witness to the faith that God has given and placed in us, just as he did for all of us through holy baptism. Today, our, our examination is going to focus on the Ten Commandments. And uh, in, in the Bible, all 66 books, God has only two real teachings that he wants us to think about. And that's the law and the gospel. Now, I know that probably wasn't part of your questions here, but can anyone tell me what, what's the purpose of the law? Remember Pastor talked about SOS? Show our sins and show us our Savior. That's the law and the gospel. And before we get on furthermore, we gotta get the gotta get the microphone here. Pastor's nervous too, so don't worry. Okay, so I just hold that for me real quick. Very good. Okay. Well let's let's start it. God gave his law in two different ways. Where did God write it on, first of all? Where did he put it? Olivia, please. Um, he put it in man's heart. Okay, he put it in men and women's hearts. So Adam and Eve knew God's will perfectly. But what happened? What happened to the law that was written in Adam and Eve's heart? Okay, they sinned, and they lost that perfect knowledge of God. So they didn't know what God's law was anymore. And that's why God had to give it a second time. Why did God give it the second time? Right? Um, on Sinai, he wrote it on the tablets of stone. Okay, he wrote it on tablets of stone. And uh, when we talk about the law, um, well, we're talking about three different parts that God gave to the law in the Old Testament. So, does someone remember that? Three different types of law. It was the Ten Commandments, it was the moral law, and then what was Abby, yeah, please? Symbol law and ceremonial law. Okay, can you explain? Can you explain what, what's the this is the civil law? Um, how Israel was supposed to be governed. Okay. And then ceremonial law? How they were supposed to worship. Okay, how they were to worship. So really what God is teaching is that the Ten Commandments kind of affects all of our life. It isn't just something that we talk about in church, but it applies, you know, with our, our law here as a society, and it also talks about, you know, our, our worship life as well. Okay, now the Ten Commandments, as Riley said, were written on two tablets of stone. How did God break it up, like, five and five, or what did he do? Brooklyn. Okay, well, why, why did God do that? Does he know math? No. Okay. 
Okay. Well, why, why did that go 1 to 3 and then 4 to 10? Right. Uh, 1 through 3 is about God, and um, 4 through 10 is about our neighbor. Okay. So God says we are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That would be commandments what? 1, 2, and 3. And then Jesus goes on and he says, and love your neighbor as yourself. What does that include? Commandments? 4 through 10. 4 through 10. Not 4 through 6. Okay. Very good. All right. So I'm thinking of a Bible passage where Jesus talks about his commandments. Now, Jesus is the one who came to do what we can't do. Because God expects perfect obedience to his law. Not one of them broken. The law in many ways is like a necklace, like a pearl necklace. If you have one pearl that's gone, you don't have a necklace anymore. You just have a bunch of bees on the ground. So God says it has to be kept perfectly. Jesus did that for us. But out of love and thanks for up for what Jesus has done, what does Jesus urge or encourage us to do? He says, if you love me, remember that passage, Abby? Okay, you will obey what I command. Okay, now, we talked about the fact that Adam and Eve, you know, had the law written in their hearts. And in a sense, that's still, there's still something there in our hearts. We call that a conscience. Can someone explain to me what a conscience is? What do you mean? Um, it's the voice in our head that tells us when we're um, committing a sin and breaking a commandment. Okay. And the sad thing about our conscience is that you can kind of deaden it. Remember, Pastor used to use the example of a pencil? You know, how do you get a pencil working good? Or good? Pencil sharpener. Oh, pencil sharpener, right. How do you keep your conscience working good? By sharpening it with what? The Bible, the scriptures, exactly. Okay, but we can deaden our conscience. And that's why God had to give us the law a second time, right? So that we know what his good and perfect will is. Okay, well, let's hear the first commandment quickly. Right. Thou shalt have. We shall have no other gods, but this is me. We shall fear and love God. Fear and love and trust in God above all things. Okay, so if we could keep this one commandment, the reality is we'd have no problem keeping all the rest. But sad to say, people substitute things in their lives for God. We think about our health, we think about our money, we think about our security, we think about all the things that we need to keep ourselves safe, when who's the one that's really keeping us safe? Say it with me. God. Our good shepherd is keeping us safe. Okay. So now, in, in the course of our study of the first commandment too, we talked about the fact that there are different forms of idolatry. Remember that, Olivia? What was that? Um, secret idolatry and public idolatry. Okay. Now, can you explain what secret idolatry? Um, worshiping something else in your heart, like money or fame. Okay, so in other words, you substitute God, you maybe go about your life as a Christian, but really in your own heart of hearts, what you're doing to keep yourself safe, that's first and foremost. That's what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep myself safe. So really, who are we worshiping? What kind of little idol are we worshiping, Olivia? Ourselves. Yeah, me and myself and I, God. Right. A public idolatry, anyone quickly? Brooklyn? Worshipping another God. Okay, worship, publicly worshipping a false God. Okay, so we think of people, you know, caught up in idolatry. All right, now, second commandment. Let's hear that quickly. Who wants to do that? You have the first commandment. You got to move it on. Who wants to do it? Okay, Abby, we have going. You shall not receive the name of the Lord your God, which is a sin. We should fear and love God so that we do not curse, swear, and use satanic arts, lie, or deceive by his name. 
but call upon him in every trouble and pray prayers and give thanks. Oh, okay, wonderful. Thank you. So in this commandment, God is protecting what? Right here. His name. His name. And when we talk about God's name, well, what are we really talking about? Olivia. Everything he wrote in the Bible. Okay, everything that God has revealed in those 66 books, really, from beginning to end, is God's name. Because it's telling us who God is. By ourselves, if we only had to rely on our conscience when it came to God, what would we think about God? Will we be happy with that kind of God? Why not? You're shaking your heads, no. Brooklyn, why wouldn't we be happy? Because what does our conscience tell us? That we're being sinful. Okay, and that God is angry. But as we're hearing today with the gospel, the good news that God has sent us our Savior, we have a good and faithful shepherd who's watching out and looking after us. Okay, what are some ways in which the commandment is broken. Let me. Um, cursing or swearing. Okay. When I talk about that, what's the difference between cursing and swearing? Sometimes people say, you know, they just use it kind of interchangeably. What's cursing? Cursing is calling down God's wrath onto something. Okay, or God's damnation. And what is swearing? Swearing by God's name. Let me. Um, calling God down as a witness. Very good. So we swear in a stack of Bibles that the walleye that we pulled out of Lake Poygan was a monster. Okay, so I mean, that's useless swearing. Now we also, in the explanation, Martin Luther talks about satanic arts and superstition. What is that about? What is that about? Remember we talked about that at length? We talked about the Ouija board. Olivia, or you broke up, you want it? Okay. Like karma, or like thinking something bad's gonna happen to you. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up because we talked about that at the end. Karma. People talk about karma all the time. And, well, give us an explanation. Tell us, what, what is karma? Um, like if you hurt someone, you could get hurt. Again. Okay, so in other words, you do bad and, you know, it'll come back at you. People, that's a superstition. What are some other forms of superstition? Astrology. Astrology. So in other words, you know, what your sign is. And, you know, you know, on the basis of your signs, you can determine what the future events in your life are going to be. How about this one? When we talk about that? Riley. Palm reading. Palm reading, okay. That uh, people look at their various lines on their hands, and this is it. This is your length of your life, and this is your heart line, and all this other stuff. Well, again, that's all superstition. Now, we also, God talks about hypocrisy in the second commandment. Do you remember what hypocrisy is all about? Being a hypocrite? Being hypocritical? Remember, that's the idea of people pretending, pretending what they really aren't. So God warns against that. Okay, so how does God want us to use his name? Think back to the explanation once again. Three things. Remember that? Everything. Pray, praise, and give thanks. Pray, praise, and give thanks. So God wants us to use his name in a wonderful way. Because we have a wonderful God. He laid down his life so that we can live. He rose from the dead so that we can have life everlasting. Okay, third commandment deals with that little Hebrew word, rest. What is the Hebrew word? Right here. Sabbath. Sabbath, okay. And for God's people of old, what did God say they were supposed to do on the seventh day? Brooklyn. Rest their bodies and their souls. Okay, rest their bodies and rest their souls. So they're not supposed to do any work. But now when you talk about resting your soul, how do you do that? Extra long nap? <laughs> the Olivia? Um, go to church and hear his word. Okay, go to church, hear his word. What would be some other ways? How about daily devotion? Opening up the Bible, reading for ourselves, portals of prayer? Those are all ways in which God 
five parts to give us rest. So he's not just saying necessarily one day out of the week, but we need to take time every day to have this conversation with our Good Shepherd who's watching out and uh, looking out after us. Okay, now, we also talked about when we're at worship, what should we do? That's kind of an important one, Abby. Participating, like singing and praying. Okay, we need to be participating by singing and praying. Worship isn't a spectator sport. Okay, we're not just sitting there and watching and, you know, looking and then maybe getting dozy or daydreamy, but we're here to listen, okay? We're here to listen and to receive what God has to say. Okay, let's hear the fourth commandment quickly. What do you? Um, out of your father and mother, what does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not anger or despise our parents or other authorities, but honor them, serve and obey them, and love and cherish them. Okay, so in this commandment, God is protecting authority. And we talked about the fact that in the fourth commandment, God is really talking about three forms of authority. Remember that? Home. Government. Church. Okay, how, how would, how does the fourth commandment, well, apply, first of all, with the home? Right then. Your father and mother. Okay, your father and your mother. What does God expect of children? Okay. Um, to respect them. Respect them. Does that mean work around them? <coughs> does that mean second guess them? No. Your parents ask you to do things that maybe you don't fully understand? Does that happen? Yeah, okay. But later on, you will. Now, when we talk about the fourth commandment, it goes beyond the home. What's the next level of authority? What would that be? Anyone? You can raise your hand higher so I can see you. Oh, the government, okay. So law enforcement agents, um, courts, judges, government, all of that, okay. And then what's the final authority? What do you mean? Church. Church. Okay. So in the church, God wants us to listen and to hear the voice of our Savior and not just blow it off. Okay, because this is important that we hear and understand who our Lord and Savior is because our life is a time of grace. And that brings us to the fifth commandment. You shall not kill. You shall not murder. Now, in this commandment, while we think about murder, murder takes on different forms. Someone want to talk about that a little bit? Riley. Um, there's suicide, abortion, mercy killing. Okay, well let's let's talk about that, you know, with suicide. Why is that kind of a very hard and terrible thing? A person. It's a person's taking their own life. Okay. And where did that life come from? Look at it. God. It came from God. Exactly. God gave the life, and God has control over that life. And God has given us our lives right now as his time of grace. So we put our trust in God no matter how difficult or dark things become because the good shepherd is with us. Now, mercy killing, what is that all about? What is that? Um, or like if you're older and not doing well and you're at the hospital, you can ask the doctor to give you a shot or pill and then it pretty much just puts you to sleep. Yeah, right. Because we don't want to face maybe what will happen at that moment. But once again, why can Christians put their trust in the Good Shepherd? Think of today's gospel. What did Jesus do? Jesus, the good shepherd, laid down his life. So if Jesus laid down his life, if Jesus took into himself our death, what does that mean with our deaths? Olivia. God has a plan for it. Exactly. God has a plan for it. And your death has been completely 
sanctified in Christ's death. That just as Jesus is risen from the dead, you too will rise from the dead. Because I live, you will live also. That's Jesus' wonderful promise. Okay, um, abortion. Let's talk about that for a minute. Um, killing an unborn baby. Okay, killing an unborn baby. None of us had any say as to how we came into this world. But once again, as we talked about in Catechism, when a sperm and an egg meet together, and it's called what's called conception, what happens then? What is created? Life. A brand new life, okay? And that life should be cherished, too. You know, sometimes we have a hard time seeing that, but that is what God tells us. Now, some other ways in which people can break the, the fifth commandment, too. We don't always need a weapon. How else can we destroy people's lives? One that happens all the time on Facebook and Twitter and other social media. What happens there? Gossip. Gossip, right. When we make people's lives miserable. When people despair. So that can be just as deadly as any kind of a gun or a knife. So God wants us to love and to forgive one another. Okay, um, let's briefly hear the sixth commandment quickly. Who wants to take that? Anyone? Olivia again? Um, you shall not commit adultery. What does this mean? You should fear and love God so that we lead sexually pure and decent lives in what we say and do, and husband and wife honor and love each other. Okay, so here God is not only protecting our, as we talked about the fifth commandment, our physical life, but the sixth commandment, he's also talking about our sexual life. In other words, really he's talking about the new way, the way in which life is brought into this world. And what does God want us to honor? First and foremost, God's gift of not just love, but Abby? Yeah, well, that's the fifth commandment, God's gift of marriage, okay, God's gift of marriage. So God doesn't want us living together to see if it's going to work, okay, God wants us to be committed. He wants a committed love. That's what we talked about in length, too. So while, you know, we look for a, a, a spouse or a mate that, you know, we could live, you know, we want to live with, it isn't just for a time, it isn't for a moment, but it's for a lifetime. Okay, seventh commandment. Let's hear that quickly. You shall not steal. Yeah. You shall not steal. What does this mean? You should fear and love God so that we do not take our neighbor's money or possessions or give them in any dishonest way, but help them to improve and protect their possessions and income. Okay. Now, in the Bible, there's kind of a rather interesting account about a king and a queen. Remember their names? People are saying, light up. Brooklyn, please. Jezebel. And what was the guy's name? The king? Sorry, with an A. Riley? Ahab. Ahab and Jezebel, the king and queen of Israel. And why did God include this account about these two people? Well, someone tell me the account. Let's tell me. Riley, tell me the account. Um, so Ahab and Jezebel were the king and queen. And there was a guy named Naboth that owned a vineyard, and mm -hmm. Ahab really wanted this vineyard, but Naboth had told him no. So Jezebel went out and got lawyers and um, claimed that Naboth, Naboth had um, cursed God. So they put him in jail, or they stoned him and killed him. And then later, Ahab and Jezebel died. Okay. Thank you. That's quite a story. That's like right out of the newspaper, right? Or something you read on the internet. Nowadays, people probably wouldn't bad bother, you know, okay, well, something terrible happened. But let's think about Ahab and Jezebel. How many commandments were broken? Where, you know, I guess the question is, where does sin begin? Where does sin begin? Right. At the thought of it. Okay, with the very thought of it. So Ahab really wanted this vineyard. 
But Naaman said, no, it's been in my family for years and years. I, mean, I want to keep it. And then remember we talked about the fact that in the account from 1 Kings, you know, he pouted, cried about it. And Jezebel came and said, well, don't you worry about it. So, okay, so we got the ninth and the 10th commandments there where sin is a thought. But, you know, we talked about the fact that sin doesn't, isn't content to stay as a thought. What does it often happen to? What does it turn into? Action. A word and an action. So as Riley said, Jezebel got some lawyers or some people of low repute that would be willing to lie. And what did they, what, what was the next commandment that was being broken? The eighth commandment. The eighth commandment. And what's the eighth commandment? So what, okay. Um, shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. Okay, you want to do the what, is it, what does this mean? Um, we should fear and love God so that we do not tell lies about our neighbor, betray him, slander him, or hurt his reputation, but speak well of him. So, but defend him, speak well of him, and explain everything in the kindest way. Okay. So we see how Jezebel broke that commandment. She destroyed Nebus's reputation. And then, well, what was the verdict for poor David? Stoned to death. So what now was the next commandment? Broken. Abby. The fifth one. The fifth commandment. Right. And last, what was the last commandment? Or the two more commandments that were broken here. The seventh. You shall not steal. Because they just took it. And then, what was the one commandment people don't really think about? Because God was involved in all of this, remember? The second commandment. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. So they were under oath that they were going to tell the truth and they lied about it. So think of how one incident broke all of these commandments. And that's something for us to think about. You know, like I say, sin never is content to stay as a thought. It, Often turns into a word or an action. And it shows us just how much we need our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How precious Jesus is because he kept that law perfectly for us. And well, if Jesus kept the law perfectly for us, then should we just disregard it? No. Our way of keep our, our when we keep the commandments, we're really saying what? Olivia. Thank you. Thank you. In other words, for showing Jesus our appreciation for all that he has done. And again, we're going to stumble and fall because we're sinners. But we need our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to pick us up and to remind us who we are and what he has done. Okay, well, it wouldn't be examination if we just didn't hear the books of the Bible. And um, hence there's a big person on learning and memorizing the books of the Bible because in Bible class that helps you find what book is easy because we talked about the Bible here we got 66 books okay so who wants to start us out Olivia please you go slowly Genesis Exodus Leviticus Numbers Deuteronomy Joshua and Judges Ruth okay and Olivia give me one First and Second Samuel, First and Second King, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms. Okay, let's stop. Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, um, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Amen, David, Daniel, uh, Joel, Amos, Obadiah. Very good. You did it, okay? Let's hear the books of the New Testament. Let's start that. Okay, we'll give you the easy part. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Okay. Hebrews, 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 Hebr
Colossians, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians, Philippians, Colossians, First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrew, James, First and Second Peter, One, Two, Three, John, Jude, Revelation. Very good. Very good. Well, thank you. Thank you for a nice review of the law today. And the gospel, because we heard the gospel about Christ, our good shepherd. So, it's over. Did, did I say it was going to be easy? It's just a conversation. Those people back there, they're just listening. But what, what's happened today is a very good thing. Because we have to know these truths about the scriptures. And while we are sinners who fail miserably at keeping the law, we have a Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has kept the law for us. And has done so perfectly. So let us rise and confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. In our intercessory prayers this morning, we include Russ Lubeck, the uh, uh, brother of uh, Sally Owen, who is uh, uh, at Theta Clark at the moment dealing with various medical issues. Uh, let us pray. O oh Lord God, you are a great physician of body and soul. And we ask you to look after the needs of us for whom our, our, our prayers are needed. You are our God of mercy and the God of all comfort. And we ask you, dear Lord, to keep your servant from temptations of the evil one and to give him patience and uh, comfort during this time of testing. We ask you, dear Lord, to guide with your hand of blessing the doctors and nurses and the medical staff that is looking after him and according to your will, to restore him to health and strength once more. As he is in the hospital, we ask you, dear Lord, to send, to call to mind the blessings that he has received in his confirmation, as he was confirmed at Christ Lutheran in West Bloomfield. May he cause to remember all of your words and promises to him, that you will never leave him or forsake him. We commend him, body and soul, to your gracious care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Also in our intercessory prayers, we include the family of Ron Elke. Ron Elke uh, passed away a week ago last Friday. Christian funeral services were conducted here at St. Paul's uh, with a private funeral uh, for Russ with his family, uh, or, or for Ron and his family. Uh, yesterday at uh, 11 a.m. and burial was at the uh, Zion Lutheran Cemetery in Greenfield. Let us pray. O Lord God, your, our days are with, your days are without end, and your mercies cannot be numbered. Make us always mindful of the shortness and the uncertainty of our own lives, but also fill our hearts with joy and peace that you have sanctified our lives by the work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd. Comfort the family and the survivors with your words and promises that you are the Good Shepherd who laid down his life only to take it back again so that your sheep can live. We thank you for all the blessings that you extended to Ron during his life, and may we then count our days and remember your mercy and look forward to that life that is with you in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. O well, Lord Jesus Christ, you are the good shepherd who laid down his life for us out of love. Help us to hear your voice, to follow where you lead, and to receive what you provide through your grace and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord, Good Shepherd and Lord have mercy.
In the times that we fear our enemies and the powers that are against us, remind us that we belong to you and that no one can snatch us out of your hand. We bring before you this day our contramans who have confessed their faith, whom you have made your own through holy baptism. Guide them with your love and power throughout their lives ahead. Give them wisdom to know the faithful path we are to take and to shepherd them and us through every trial and trouble and temptation. Let us pray to the Lord, good shepherd and Lord, have mercy. Give us courage that we do not live in captivity to our fears. Guide those who lead us in this and every land. Provide peace, justice, and freedom for people everywhere. And in our busy days, give us time to reflect upon the never-failing goodness of God and to experience joy and security and peace that you provide for us, that we find contentment and peace in you. Let us pray to the Lord, good shepherd and Lord, have mercy. Protect and defend the members of our armed forces and public workers who keep our communities safe. Defend us from our enemies and teach us to rely on your provision, the true protector of us all. Let us pray to the Lord, good shepherd and Lord, have mercy. That we do not forget those who are in need, but share with all the Lord has entrusted to us and to display the kind of love shown and known that has no end. Let us pray to the Lord. Good shepherd and Lord, have mercy. That we recall the saints of old who put their trust in the Lord, and that we also be found faithful when he returns in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Good shepherd and Lord, have mercy. In your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and in whose name we also join to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor, and give you peace. Amen. Our closing song this morning is Shine, Jesus Shine. Please be seated.
Good morning and again, welcome to worship here at St. Paul's on Good Shepherd and Examination Sunday here. And you did a great job. So, wonderful. Big smiles. So. Um, just a few announcements in the morning, both, I guess just one. And that deals with the spring quarterly voters meeting. Usually that's always here at the end of uh, April. But uh, due to uh, examinations and confirmations that are going on among our, our church leadership, we're moving that until uh, Sunday, May 16th, uh, in between, or I should say after the 9 a.m. service in the Bible class room. As you leave this morning, if you haven't picked up a portals of prayer, those are available in the back. Um, and may the Lord give you all a blessed day. Thank you. 